Yep, we are gonna need this tonight. So, I have Nicole Freeman's Mystery Rickenbacker here. I have, been, I have to confess my ignorance and say that I have absolutely no idea what it is. I mean, clearly it's uh, shaped, you know, or designed in a similar manner to the 4001. Um, but it's a six string and it's certainly vintage. A couple of the issues with it are this little area here. And at first uh, you kind of look at it and it's like, what is that? Well, clearly there was a crack in this pick guard that sort of formed here as a part of this whole like little screw washer assembly. Somebody filled it with super glue and then the rust just kind of went over the years into it. So we'll try to do something about that. The other thing that's going on here is that some of these divots are like crazy. I mean, it needs a refret, but we're gonna save that for another time. That's just so involved. If you see when I put it against the light like this, this is such a heavily lacquered fretboard that it would take at least 10 hours to do a refret on this. So I sort of advised against it for the time being. This is just a good opportunity to talk about vintage guitars in general. So the first thing that I do when I get a guitar that's this old in is check out the tuners. Um, we have to assume that these haven't been maintained or cleaned or lubed in the last 40 or 50 years. It's just sort of how you have to think when you're dealing with an instrument this old. There's a little bit of grit in these ports here. So I'm gonna clean that out as best I can and then lubricate it. And then we can proceed to taking the strings off. Very typical of Rickenbacker is we have a dual truss rod set up here. And we can see that. All right, so now we can take the neck off. My little trick for keeping screws and bolt-on plates in the same place. Time for a little bit of Rickenbacker trivia. In order to date these things, you check the jack plate. So we see the top there says SH. So the first letter is a year code. That means it was built in 1979 and the H means it was uh, built in August. So the bottom kind of gives you an idea of the model. I think this is a 480. So it's a Rickenbacker 480 from 1979, from August of 79. So we got all that jelly, rusty super glue out of there and replaced it with something a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Okay, so a little bit on the process of crowning. What a fret should be is like a nice rounded shape with um, a little tiny landing area on top that the string actually sits on. But what happens is over time that it'll flatten out a lot and that can cause a couple of different problems. Um, one of which, it can throw your intonation off a little bit, but the bigger problem to me is that when you have a big landing area on a fret, you don't know if your string is going to rest forward or back. You know, so if it rests back on the on the sort of back edge of this, it can actually knock against the front and buzz against the front of it. The method that I really like are the three corner files. There are a bunch of different files that people use for this, but uh, I've found that these are the best. They're the most customizable. Like some of the other ones are really one size fits all. So this, what you do is you just sort of take it and slowly edge that big landing into something nice and rounded with a tiny little area on top and it takes a little while but the results are worth it dealt with the frets so now what we got to do is kind of do our best to kind of salvage some of this and what I'm going to do is use naphtha to sort of get whatever all this craziness is off of here and then a bunch of machine oil to I mean I'm not even going to try turning these parts until we get them all cleaned up and that's starting to look a little bit better. One of the other things that I did off camera was fill, uh, to fill these slots. These slots were like basically down to the fretboard. So let's see if I can do this quickly. Dust. I took this little piece of horn and shaved off some dust into here and filled it with uh, some water thin. Awesome, that's a million times better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
All right, well, I guess we gotta plug it in. <laughs> Thank you. 